computer. Please. What's up, Leon? Mike, my brother, it's been a while, man. It has, brother. It has. I'm excited to chop it up with you, bro. Mm. Oh, yeah. We got to do that here soon, very soon, brother. Of course. Well, guys, I uh, wanted to welcome you all onto tonight's call. Now, Leon, if you don't know who Leon is, he is a fellow Trade House OG. One of the originals that was with me is with me since you know the the, the you know the days of the trade house you know fetus. Um, <laughs> I've got baby mm -hmm. brain happening right now. <laughs> Leon's face. Um, basically, guys, Leon is an OG. He's a go live educator. Um, he's from the UK, living in Australia, down here in Melbourne. Um, weapon of a trader, weapon of a mindset. He's a trade house OG um him if you don't know the story with how you know it all landed in australia basically leon was an og myself josh raglas and zach mcdonald um and then kind of the rest is history so it's been so good that you've been here and you've been so consistent and watching your journey has been really amazing so i thought we owe it to the squad to have three ogs on the call tonight go oh. I'm excited. I'm excited to share what I can to help every individual one of you as well, for sure. Amazing, amazing. Um, so guys, if you can have your cams on, I would really love it. I know Leon would. I know Mike would. It makes our jobs so much more easier when we can connect with you through the cam, can see your facials, can see if you're laughing at our jokes or if it's just me laughing at myself. Um, <laughs> I had a cracker of a word on my call last night, guys. If you are new to these calls, you know that there's typically a word that I can, you know, always aim to pronounce, but then never can pronounce. Um, and it was a really good one. I'm not even going to say it right now. So we'll just wait and see what the word is tonight. But guys, any breakthroughs that you have on the call tonight, remember condescension. I said it. I, I'll kept, I kept saying condensation. <laughs> Not the word. <laughs> if you have any breakthroughs on the call tonight, what are we doing? Drop it in the chat for me. What are we doing if we have a breakthrough on the, on the on this call tonight? We're doing a hashtag, Blue Wolfies. Guys, the charity that we're supporting um, is a local charity to Mackay, and it is called Run For My Life, and it is a suicide awareness charity. So Mackay, I live in Mackay now, and it has one of the highest rates of suicide in Australia. Really shocking, really, really, really shocking. So that is the charity that we're supporting. Every single time you guys hashtag Blue Wolf, it is a 10 USD dollar donation that comes from Trade House Oz. Um, straight into, you know, at the end of the month, we tally it up and then we donate. So please remember that. Keep these breakthroughs coming because they do make a difference. All right, so let's kick off tonight's call. I'm just going to be more of a facilitator tonight, and we're going to just ebb and flow between Mike and Leon. So in terms of structure, who wants to go first? Do you want to go first, Mike? Do you want to go first, Leon? Do you want to do a quick rock, paper, scissors? What do you want to do? Nah, cool. Mike, take it away, my bro. It get me going. It get me in flow state. <laughs> All right, got you. All right, this is a great question. Question number one. So this was actually last week's questions that we've saved for this week. All right. So question number one that we have that was posted in the Discord last week was number one, how do you define success in the financial markets? Four, six, seven. Um, so to me, six, like the word success is obviously obligatory or not obligatory it's vague it is i mean okay here i'll give you my easy answer to it it's your ability to discipline yourself in order to do the same function over and over and over because the alternative is you are learning to trade but if you learn how to trade and let's say, for example, again, you find success in whatever it is that you're doing and then to scale it, the only, again, alternative is to go for more. And to me, I just don't know where that snowball effect stops. 
it is the same thing with like drums, like the things that are behind me, for example, the way that I learned to play music, for example, was not that I needed to add more cymbals or more toms or, you know, something else. It was my ability to consistently uh, show up to the same thing. And so how do I define it is certainly not profit because anybody, literally somebody that just got started tonight could throw whatever amount of money into an account and hit the blue button because blue is their favorite color happened to be right and quintuple their account. Stuff like that happens all the time, you know, and it is something that again is something that is definitely possible, but more importantly, the question is, would you risk your future on that? On the idea that, this one trade or a series of trades is the thing that's going to take you to the promise land. To me, no, because it only takes one loss in order for whatever type of results that you've had to be mitigated 100% to be gone. And so the success to me is never going to be drawn by profit. If I was Warren Buffett, Y'all know who Warren Buffett is, right? Or, uh, well, let me just assume everybody here knows who Warren Buffett is. If I was Warren Buffett and right now you were sitting in my office and, you know, again, I was Warren Buffett and you were coming in for a job and I asked you to present to me not your trading results, but your uh, track record. Can you present it? Yes or no. If you cannot present it, what that means to me is that you are starting from day one over and over and over, that there's no consistency and that you were just simply trying to catch pips and make money. And that's it. But really, again, honestly, what does that even mean? If you cannot, again, present to me, because this is, again, something I say all the time to people, I'm sure a lot of people here have heard it, the same trade that you do to make $5 is the same exact type of trade that you could do to make 50 or 500 or 5,000 or so on and so on. In my opinion, my opinion, do not take this as in, oh, well, Mike's right because he's Mike. Don't do that. In my opinion, scaling your lot size instead of scaling your pip count in terms of the amount of pips that you're trying to catch is silly to me because when does that ever stop? Let's say if you started at 50 and you're catching 50 over and over, great. Then you go to 100 and you're catching that over and over and over. Then you go to 150 over and over. Then you get to 200, then to 250, then to the 300. When does that ball ever stop? And so to me, it's more so about your, more importantly, it's about your discipline to know when to stop trading. When you hit a loss percentage or when you hit a profit percentage. And then if you can do that, do it again tomorrow. Do it again the next day. Do it again the next day. If you are moving stop losses like low or, you know, like uh, lower doesn't, oh, Lower if it's a buy, of course, or higher if it's a sell. If you are moving your stop loss or moving your take profit, because, for example, you think that the market will go more in your direction. So, therefore, I should move my take profit because I can catch more pips or I should move my stop loss, you know, further away because I still think that the trade is going to work the way that I want, but you, again, move your stop loss. All you're doing is going from whatever percentage loss, assuming that you're using a, a risk percentage to a much deeper percentage. Has any of you guys ever been in that situation before? Have you guys ever moved a stop loss? Or, or, or you don't even have a stop loss. And you have a trade that is going against you. And then by the end of it, let's say you take a 20% loss, a 30% loss, a 50% loss in 
a series of bad trades. To me, that is the perfect demonstration of somebody that doesn't understand trading. They understand how to look at the markets and call a buy or a sell. Just because you guys can call a buy or a sell, even consistently, 90% of the time you can be right. It only takes that 10% or, you know, nine trades you can win. One trade, one can mitigate everything. Who here has experienced that yet? Like, I'm actually curious. Who has felt that? Have you guys lost everything? Um, maybe not one trade, like one, two, three trades, you know, just a series of bad decisions that eliminated all of the progress or worse blew the account not didn't even put you back to square one it put you back to square zero taking whatever money that you put into it if it was a live account or even if it was a demo account the exact opposite of that logic exists as well you could also trade in such a way to where you literally could could lose more and still be profitable on the percentage of your account. Because the way that people trade that way is that one loss mitigates, you know, two, three, four, five, 15 wins or whatever. But again, the exact opposite exists. You could trade to where one win could mitigate one, two, three, four, five losses. Why does no one trade that way? Well, that's a whole other conversation as well. But if you have experienced that pain, the experience of that, that to me defines a trader. Leon, go ahead, brother. I should have went first, to be honest, because Mike just summed up 40 answers literally in one. So, um, you know, going into a battle of understanding, um, you know, trying to, trying to compete against answer is, is, is def definitely difficult because everyone's answer is going to be a little bit different to everybody's. Um, question as well but for me as Mike was saying consistency is obviously the main part of sticking to a trading plan and you know I use the same principles in anything I do <clears throat> going to the gym you know being consistent at the gym lines with the same principles or you don't go into the gym and start on 50 key dumbbells and just hope to get big you've got to start from somewhere and work your way up and it's the same principles that apply within trading is you start with something small and learn the basics and the concepts of being consistent and being disciplined because what you do with a small account will be exactly the same thing what you do with a big account except when the numbers are different so the same principles apply regardless how big your account is that's why learning with something small and then obviously gaining that momentum um, and experience from something small so you don't take them huge losses when you've got something you know tragic going on in your in your account is um you know the same principles apply so for me consistency like mike said is you know sticking to a plan you know having a trading account that is ridiculous amounts is not going to you know change the same concepts of of something small i think a lot of people would think just the more money they have in their trading account um the more money they're going to make and it's it's not the case you know if you can't make money with a hundred dollars you're not going to make money with a hundred grand so if you apply the same principles with a small account to a large account, you know, it's game over from there. So, you know, like I said, answering, you know, the questions that we're going to get as well, you know, and, and, and Mike is the goat in the game and trying to, you know, match what Mike is going to say is, is very, very difficult because obviously he has so much more information that you can apply within the game as well. And it's great to, to, to be in a, the presence of Mike and obviously um, I'm learning so much whilst Mike talks as well. So it's just, a, it's a blessing to be here um, and, you know, to, to go back and forth. And like I said, I'm here to answer the, the, the questions to my best ability of what got to me where I am and consistency and discipline, how you do anything is how you do everything. So I've same principles in my life that I apply in gym, in, in, in Forex, in business, this is exactly the same principles. So it's just consistency and discipline to sum it up. I love that guys. Have you guys, if you, I'm sorry, Shay, for the people that have experienced it, be thankful. Mm. 
be thankful that you know what that pain feels like. Have you lost money? Have you felt that? It's the same epitome of how did you guys learn to not touch fire? Did, is there anybody in here that can honestly say that they listen to their parents or older siblings to not touch fire or a glowing red stove? Or again, did you, just like, because I did as well, I touched it. I had to, to be burned because who we are is determined by the scars. Be thankful that you've gone through the pain now with a $100, $200, $500,000 account, you certainly wouldn't really want to be going through that with a million dollar account, right? Be thankful that you've learned those lessons now because don't forget, guys, it does suck. Not a single person in here wants to lose money. No one. But it's the cost. It's the price. The price to understand what to do and what not to do. When you can learn these lessons now, just like what Leon was saying, a $100 account, a $100,000 account, or a million dollar account does not change anything at all. At all. Nothing. Nothing at all. And if you can't do it here, you're not going to do it there. So Leon absolutely hit on that point. Go ahead, SJ. So guys, i got a question for you in you know, the participants, I was like <laughs> trying to figure out how to say not say Leon and Mike. <laughs> but by all means, you guys can answer too. Guys, who's listening in? When Leon just said there that about, you know, having more money doesn't necessarily mean you'll make more money. If you listen to the concepts I teach, write in the chat why that would be true. Why is that the case? Why do people think that the more money that they have in a trading account, the more money they think they'll make? Or maybe another way of asking that question is, what makes people lose money in the markets, right? From having a big account, right? I'll tell you right now. And it's something I really love talking about it. And I'm teaching about it literally as we speak, you know, throughout this whole week. And that's your financial thermostat. The reason, like, do you know how many times I hear traders say, SJ, I made, you know, this much money last year, I've blown it all. Do you know why, guys? It's because of your financial thermostat. Do you know, it's the exact same reason why people who win the lottery are broke again in five years. It's the same reason why Mike Tyson is broke. It's the same reason why you know, 78 to 80% of NFL players are broke after, you know, two, three years of retirement, guys. We need to learn how to manage our money. So having more money in a trading account, if you come to me and said, SJ, I want to open an account for $5,000. I'm going to tell you why. I want you to tell me why you want to open that. I want to see what you can do with $100. That's what I want to see you do. I want to see you take that $100 to $200, that $200 to $300, because when you have that smaller account, what do you actually learn? You learn better habits. You're more disciplined because, you know, you literally can't over leverage. You've got to get used to seeing the small numbers before you can get used to, to seeing the big numbers, right? So if you don't know what your financial thermostat is, it's literally this, it's, it's, it's largely determined by our subconscious beliefs about money, about wealth right? And it is our brain, you know, what does our brain do? It's driven to protect us from potentially painful situations. What is trading? That to our mind is a perceived threat. What is the threat to? It's a perceived threat to our capital. So you will do everything in your, in your, in your, in your power to avoid doing that. So you'll do stupid things like closing out trades early, maybe moving stop losses, you know, if you move, if you close out trades too soon, maybe it's because there's a pullback and you're scared of it coming back down to your entry, right? That was one of the other questions tonight. If you move your stop losses, you're afraid of it being stopped out. Why are you afraid of it being stopped out? Right? There's so much conversation around, 
you know, if you guys, you guys hear it all the time, it's not, you know, I know you guys know how to trade. So go work on your psychology, but what the fuck does that mean? Right. Reading a book doesn't necessarily help you. You need to get to the subconscious root of your problems. That's why I love these calls. Right. So a very common theme that I'm having in, in conversations uh, this week and last week with a lot of you who's actually on this call tonight. So I'm glad you're on this call is about a lot like a losing streak. Right. And now you're you're feeling FOMO, not FOMO, but fear to take the trade. But yet, you know how to you know how to break down a chart, you know how to read a chart. Right. So what we have to really and this is where this is, you know, you guys, uh, Mike and Leon, please elaborate from this. When it comes to the charts, you guys, most of you know what you're doing. Right. But you'll have a much higher chance at success in trading if you approach the charts based on an objective frame of mind and work from a, a mind that's free of emotional bias, right? Which is very difficult to do. Very difficult to do. So when it comes to the psychology side of trading, when we deal with our mind with our, with our own minds, often our objectivity is screwed, is screwed, skewed screwed either way right and it's it's clouded by biases and superficial things right so an example of this and it's a conversation I had with one of you yesterday and I'm going to throw you under the bus but I'm not going to say your name doesn't stick to his trading plan so what did I tell him to do it's pinned to his cork board I've actually told two people on this call to do this I don't know if there's a girl and a guy <laughs> He pulled his, on, so on a Zoom call, he pulled his uh, trading plan off his cork board and I said, rip it up. He's like, why would I rip it up? You don't follow it, so why have it? Why do you have it? If you're not following it, rip the fucking thing up and chuck it in the bin, burn it if you will. This is how serious we need to get about trading, guys. And okay, before we move on to the next one, Agree with me or not agree with me. When I was young, I grew up in a fairly strict house. I always knew right or wrong for most, for most part. <laughs> I got disciplined if I didn't, right? And whether you guys are a parent or not, this can go for children. You can probably agree that having and enforcing a set of rules is extremely important to maintain an orderly household, right? Yes or yes. So think about this, guys. Any trader that wants to make it for the long haul must also have a really strict set of rules and make sure we stick to them. Because at the end of the day, what good are rules if we're going to continuously break them? Because what happens when we continuously break them? We're going to rip through our capital. So think about that. If that We need rules to maintain order. I love how Stuart, Stuart's a dad and he's like, yes, in capitals. <laughs> so think about that. If you have strict rules in your household, because like what that does, what that does is it's, you know, we're, we're basically self-employed. Okay. But think about this, guys. If you guys, a lot of you want to become FTMO funded. But I want you to visualize actually working on a trading floor, right, with heaps of other traders. Do you think for one second, if you broke your trading plan and you didn't follow your rules and you're being reckless with your account, do you think you'd still have a job? Because if you want to be trading like a professional, you got to start fucking acting like one. So do you think a professional trader would break their trading plan or not follow it, would break their rules, would be reckless with their account? If you want to manage big money, if you want to become an FTMO funded trader, start behaving like one. Okay, start. We, we need some self accountability. That's what we need. Because when, when you have a job, you've got someone holding you accountable. You got, you've got someone holding you accountable. When you don't, when it's just you in your little room at home, who's holding you accountable? No one. All right. So, Mike Leon. What are the things, the question was the things, no other word. What are the things that are going to separate people from the large majority of traders who fail? 
Leon, you go first. It's your turn. So what, like as Jay said, accountability. Um, I think being a go live educator has helped me dramatically due to the fact that I've got students um, and it holds me accountable to the things that I say I have to do. And if it was just me behind the screen, um, following my own trading plan, there was going to be times where it gets a little bit difficult. But where I have to preach what I say, it makes it a reality for me that I've got a lot of accountability. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a partner or a friend or whatever it is that's in the trading game, you know, holding yourself accountable is super important. But, you know, if you can't even hold yourself accountable behind that screen, then who can really? You know, so for me personally, you know, a trading plan has always been a big thing. For anyone that knows my journey, um, I started with a very, very small account. And I looked at $2 like it was 20 grand. And I've always had that vision rather than my present, what my future was going to look like. I didn't care about what people thought about me or how they looked at me because I was only making five, ten dollars per trade. That was irrelevant to me because my vision was much more bigger than five, ten, fifteen dollars. And if you can't get over the fact that that is all you're making right now, you're going to have to because that's all you're working with right now. You can't expect a million dollars with a two hundred dollar account. So accountability to me for what I was doing. My vision was a lot bigger than what my current situation was. Yes, okay, I had a very small account, but was that going to stay like that if I kept sticking to my rules and my plan? No, of course not. So six years later, I'm so grateful that I did because it, I didn't only just get there. I flew past it a year before. So I hit my goal, which was supposed to be the fifth year. I hit the fourth year. And that was me sticking to my plan consistently every single day. And knowing what it is that I was supposed to be doing, regardless what everyone else thought of me. And I think it's, it's, it's people's, you know, lack of patience that really holds them back to where it is that they're supposed to be or going to be due to the fact of where they currently are. So, you know, focusing on your present is not going to be good for your future, because if you've only got $200 in your account and you're making five, 10, $15, you think, well, it's only five, 10, $15. I never looked at it like that. I'm like, wow, that's five, 10, 15% maybe. If I had a million dollars in my account, that's 150 grand. I didn't look at the concept of money. That money was never the issue. I never looked at, oh my God, I'm, I've only made $5. I'm like, yo, if that's a million dollars, that's five grand, that's 50 grand, that's 25 grand. So, you know, my vision was a lot bigger than what my current situation was. And when you can see things from that perspective, I think you, you're in it for the longevity. You understand the long-term vision. You understand you ain't in it for a year or two. This is a five-year, 10-year, 15-year thing. I treat this like stocks and investment. Every trade I place is like an investment. I treat every trade like an investment. I don't treat it like, oh my God, I'm gonna place this trade and hopefully win. No, I know my target. I know exactly where I'm supposed to get out. I know exactly what my risk is on that trade. I'm willing to take the trade, willing to risk that trade, of the percentage that I was willing to do and I was willing to take whatever percent I was willing to take off that per trade. And I always tell people, every trade is a goal to your large financial goal by the end of five, 10, 15 years. You shouldn't look at, tra you know, every trade is just making money as a goal to that large goal. So every trade I place is like, all right, cool. That's that one ticked off. I'm one step closer to that end number that I'm looking for. So every trade I place is getting me closer to that number that I'm trying to make. And then guess what from there? It snowballs again we start again so you know my concept of limiting yourself to you know your your own you know justification of what you actually want from a trade and just knowing what targets you need to match and just getting out of the trade sometimes it is well a percentage target that you're aiming for because of the currency pairs you know if you if you let's say for instance you're aiming for three percent if you open your mt4 and you add a a hundred pip target, sometimes your pip count doesn't reflect the dollar amount. So for me personally, if my dollar amount has matched, which will be the target value of what percentage I'm trying to make, I will exit the trade before it hits my take profit because that's what I was aiming for. I don't always have to hit my TP. I will exit before it hits my TP if that dollar value is matched to what my target was. So I think a lot of people are trying to get into a trade for every TB getting smashed without actually looking at the percentage they've made from that target they're looking for as well. So that may help somebody. Hmm. Mikey, what other things that is going to separate people from the large majority of traders who fail? Well, 
<clears throat> first of all, Leon absolutely like dinged on some of the most important, you know, uh, the most, the, some of the most crucial factors that in my opinion are the systemic issue the idea of well i have more money so therefore i should make more money is like the idea of selling drugs it's the same ideology of flipping money like going to a casino for example people don't go to a casino to make a little bit of money they want to take x amount of you know 200 500 and turn it into uh, whatever amount of money. But the thing is, is that that is absolutely catered by the society we come from. And the reason why is because no one is taught compounding. No one is taught how to actually make money work for money. If you guys can think back and, and, and maybe again, uh, uh, you, you can think back to your own personal life. But has there ever been a point in your life where there was talking about actually not saving money, but compounding money? I know that I can speak for myself personally. That was never, ever. My parents, my grandparents, my great, 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 great grandparents, my aunts, my uncles, uh, friends, parents, none of them... And I, and I truly mean this when I say this, none of them understand that concept. It's the same idea and where it shows itself is what I hear personally all the time. And I'm sure Leon does too. I have $500 in my account. What can I do with it? <laughs> there's, no, there's no right or wrong answer to that question. You could, you could do anything with any amount of money. But the more important point is that you're not, do you really want to base your, you know, your trading future on such an idea? And for me, at least, the answer is, of course, no, because that is applying the belief systems that we have all been taught to trading. We are bringing what we know to trading. And that's the problem. What I always try to explain to people is that if you were legitimately serious about trying to learn trading, not just to, when I say trading guys, I don't talk, I, I, when, I'm, when I say that, I don't mean looking at a chart and your ability to call a buy or a sell because of X, Y, Z, one, two, three reasons. Even though you might be right, more times than not, you can also be right. But even again, if you win 90% of the time, 90%, you win nine out of the next 10 trades you take. Does that by definition mean anything at all? No. One trade, one can mitigate nine losses. The problem is, is that we are not taught that, guys. We're simply not. It's hard to understand. It, it, not, not understand it. It's hard to not just wrap our mind around it, but to truly embrace that as a belief. For me, like, I, I mean, I can speak for me personally. It is something that, again, directly goes against everything I've ever been taught. This is, again, why I always say what you do to make $5 is what you do to make 50 or 500 or 5,000 or 500,000 or whatever. Honestly, and I, and I truly genuinely mean this question, where else at any other point in your life, and maybe there is, maybe there is, I don't know, of course, where else has that ever, ever been a possibility? Where else could you go to understand to make five dollars over and over and over, to then make fifty dollars over and over and over, to then make five dollars or five hundred dollars over and over and over, to make five thousand dollars over and over and over? In my life, no. 
Nowhere. You know what my parents taught me? Save. An IRA or a 401k. I, I'm sure like if you're in Australia, it's probably not the same thing. A saving. Save, save it for a rainy day. That's what we're taught. I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but that's what I was taught. That's what everybody in my family does. Do you know what saving money is? Dead money. At the end of the day, money that is in a mattress or under floorboards or in the, the sheetrock or simply doing nothing, it is dead money. It does nothing for you. All it does for you is give you the sense of mind and gives you the peace of mind that whatever, you know, the rainy day, for the rainy day, I have something. Well, I can then also say learning from people that do not operate that way from, you know, for, I guess, a lack of a better term, people who have money or millionaires, not a sing not one of them operates that way. And so this idea, and now coming back to one of the other things, this idea that you need money, like I need a higher account balance in order to make more money. First of all, that is true. By definition, yeah. If you have a higher account balance, yeah, you can go on higher lot sizes. And what most people think is that, again, if I have a bigger account balance, therefore, I can trade on higher lot sizes. Therefore, I can make more money. That logic is not wrong. That is true. But the problem with that is that people get stuck on the idea that, well, a $100 or a $500 account or whatever is not going to be helpful at all. If I'm going to trade, then I need you know, 2000 or 5000 or 10000 or whatever, in order to start making money to most importantly, supplement income. And this is one of the things that I wanted to bring up. If you guys are trying to quit your job, if you're trying to pay bills, pay rent, pay your car payment, whatever, with trading, and you haven't even been trading for a year, two years, maybe three years, or I mean, there's not obviously a specific time period. That's not what trading is. You might as well go start selling weed. And as funny as that is, it's the truth. Because that's what you're trying to do. It is applying the same things we have ever been taught to trading. We're applying everything that we think and what we feel works to a completely brand new system. Where else in your life have you ever been told about trading money for money, which is what trading is, as opposed to time for money? It is the exact opposite. And this is, again, something I talk about all the time. You have to understand how different that truly is. How, how insufficient me and presumably all of you guys, everybody, every, my family, like, you know, all of us, none of us are taught this. And so the idea of a higher account balance or more pips or again, the microwave mentality. It is toxic. It is destructive. Not in the sense that, yes, again, you could have a $10,000 account right now, literally not know a single thing about trading, but sell a particular chart because red is your favorite color, happen to be right, and you could quintuple your account. Stuff like that happens all the time. But then people will gauge like, look at how good of a trader I am because of the amount of money that I've made. Do you guys honestly think that the amount of money that you made is equivalent to how good of a trader you are? 
No, not at all. Because what matters most is how you're making that money. If you happen to take one, two, three trades that happen to, again, you know, 500% your account, you're not a trader. Don't sit there and act like you know what you're doing when you happen to take a couple of trades and now you've made a bunch of money. That's asinine. That is ridiculous. <laughs> what really does matter is, again, like what I said, can you, does everybody here, again, truly understand what you do? And these are just example numbers. I always use the same example numbers for a reason, but 50 pips uh, take profit or a 15 pips stop loss. Does everybody here again truly understand what would happen if you could consistently catch 50 pips or only lose 15? Over and over and over and over and over and over. That's how you scale from $5 profits or $1.50 loss to $50 profits or $15 losses or $500 profits to $150 losses to $5,000 profits or uh, $1,500 losses and so on and so on, period. Can you guys tell me what's, what can stop you from doing that? What can, what can stop you from understanding to like, again, not, not talk about profit. And that's again, the biggest problem guys, every, every, Everybody is so focused on making money, not because I don't understand why people need to pay bills, people need to eat, people want to quit their jobs, people hate, you know, the circumstances of their life and they want to change and blah, and all of these things. And then they find trading and think that immediately everything is just going to change because they find the best strategy or the best broker, or the best mentor, or whatever. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's, it, well, it's not a lie per se. It's a false perception. Because again, going back to what I just said, what would happen if you could consistently make $5 profits or $1.50 loss? What if you focused on that for the next year, two years, three years? That's it. Don't worry about what's in your account. Just the same lowest lot size possible. $5 profit or $1.50 loss. What would happen? Eventually, that will scale. And then it goes to $50 loss or $50 wins or $15 losses. And then, of course, it scales and scales and scales. At some point, however long it takes. Does anybody not understand that? Is anybody confused on what I just said? What can stop that from happening? How can you, as an individual, not go from a 0 0.01 to a 0 0.1, then to a 1.00? then to a 10.00, then to a 100.00. The only thing that stops that from happening is that the fact that people cannot consistently do that. Why? Because of the, the greed or the enticement of, well, look at how good of a trader I am. Look at my track record. Have any of you guys done this before? Have you ever looked at your track record and said, oh my God, look at how good of a trader I am. I'm making all this money. I'm winning all these trades. So you know what? I'm going to over leverage. Not, you don't use the word over leverage. Now it's time to standard. Now it's time to go higher. Because you look back at your results and say, well, that's how good of a trader I am. So therefore... Now, fuck all the rules. Now, I'm here for money. Now, I'm just going to start, you know, a, like what it a, like risk management equals LOL. Now, I'm just going to start, you know, just going crazy. When that happens, 
that's when the catastrophic losses happen. It happens all the time, guys. It happens to people all day. But even when and especially if, again, you have experienced a winning streak and then you take a couple of losses that blow all of it and you feel doubt and you feel fear or you feel anger or you feel confusion and you do, and you like you have convinced yourself that you don't know what's going on, why trading's failing or why none of this is working and does trading work and blah, 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 blah. All of that is self-prescribed problems because not a single one of those things would have happened had you not done any of that in the first place. It is never a doubt of does this work? Can this work? Can trading work? Can can trading make me a bunch of money? If you ever, ever, ever feel like you're, if you recognize at least that you're questioning yourself on does this work? Please always try to remember, guys, that's not a subjective question. That is not a question for each individual. It is an objective truth. This does work. 100%. That is not the issue. That is not the question. That is not the problem. The problem is, is can we as individuals consistently stick to what it is that we have set out to do. I don't care if you guys trade support resistance, if you trade institutional trading, if you trade with harmonics. Do you honestly think that just because you guys are on bounce back and you've learned institutional trading and you know imbalances and institutional candles, do you honestly have yourself convinced that, oh, I found it. <laughs> off we go to the Lamborghini dealership. That's not how this works. You can have the best strategy in the world, but fundamentally not operate the way that you should. Therefore, and I use this example, I use this example all the time. I have a drum set right behind me, right? Do you guys know how to play drums? It's not because I have a good or a bad drum set behind me. If you don't know how to play the piano and I put you on a $100 keyboard and you sound awful because you don't know how to play the piano on a $100 keyboard, is that somehow going to change because I put you on a $100,000 grand piano? Of course not. You don't know how to play the piano. So the instrument that you're using changes nothing in the same way logic in trading this strategy that strategy this broker that broker this mentor that mentor this time frame that time frame this color candlesticks that color candlesticks this and that none of that will change shit it's you it's the common denominator go ahead sj fucking okay, i can't follow that up but the only <laughs> <laughs> both of you the only thing that i will say is this super cool thing I heard, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. And it basically says, if you're green, you're growing. If you're ripe, you're rotting. What does that mean, guys? It means never stop being a student. The amount of people that suffer from the, you know, the disease of I know itis kills me. It'll kill you as a trader. Never stop showing up, learning. Like never stop doing that. The amount of, like my post the other day actually got blew up. Uh, it was about if your mentor doesn't have a mentor, don't learn from that person. Who are they learning from? If you're green, you're growing. If you're ripe, you're rotting. Right? Every single person that is the greatest of the greats all had a mentor, all have a mentor. No one that is like truly great are solo wolves. Stop trying to be one. Stop trying to figure this out on your own. Why do you think we have so many calls every single week? So many opportunities 
for questions to be asked. If you're feeling alone, you know, without going down the trauma route, because <laughs> we're not having that conversation right now, it's because you're making yourself feel alone, right? The communities that are available to you within the discords, within the go lives, the, you know, the telegrams, this is a space for continuous growth. Always continuous growth, never stop learning, never stop showing up, never stop asking questions. Closed mouths don't get fed. The people that struggle with trading are the ones that try and do it alone, are the ones that don't show up to calls. It's, that's not a coincidence. Yet the ones that do really well show up. They ask the questions that they think are dumb when they're not dumb because there's no such thing as a dumb question. The only, well, there is, but the only, <laughs> the only dumb question is the one not asked. But in trading, I don't believe there's a dumb question. You know, every single question that you have was probably one that Leon had at, at some point, was one that I had at one point. Like, Leon, remember it took me like four months to get my head around a pip and like <laughs> Isaac and them guys are like doing calls and I'm like, what does this even mean? Like, I, I could not get it, guys. Right, but the one thing to, to answer that question, the one thing that, you know, Mike and I jumped on right before here and we've, you know, most Leon, Mike and I, we're going into our seventh year right? The thing that's kept us here is the vision, right? I didn't know, Leon probably didn't even know that he was going to get really good at this. He probably didn't even know he was going to become a go live educator. A terrible or, school. 100%. So was I, you know, I'm a dropout. You know? Don't ask me to add. Oh, yeah, I was trying to like figure out my little nephew or thing or his bloody birth life number today. And I'm like, what's the 10th of May? So the 10th plus five plus 2022. Like, fuck me. I had to get a calculator. Guys. You, know, you know what I think a big problem is, is why I think I think people are trying to compare their chapter one to people's chapter seven. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to think I've been in the game for almost seven years now. If you would have seen me in my first two years, I am 10 times worse than any beginner on this call. Trust me, like awful. Can I fight but, you for that position? <laughs> <laughs> but it just shows, you know, consistency and just showing up and just making sure you're asking the right questions to the right people and being in the right rooms, not for the wrong reasons. You know, I see people turn up to events just to get pictures and just show up rather than actually absorb the knowledge and, and be present you know going into events because the boys and girls are in there rather than actually going in there and absorb from mentors and, and educators and people that have the right value to to be able to pour into them so i think comparing yourself is well look you're in multiple discords you see instagram you see facebook you see everybody else is trading going right but yours is going wrong that's the worst way you could look at trading you know the moment you limit the noise from everybody else and just focus on yours is the moment that your trading will start taking off because you don't know what everybody else is doing. You just know what you're doing. You know, just make sure you're getting the right questions to the right people to help you get to that next level rather than watching everybody else's journey. Focus on your own. You know, regardless whether you've got $200 in your account, that won't be $200 one day, you know? And that's what people just need to grasp is the concept of it won't always be this way. You know, what you currently got won't always be what you currently got. So, you know, never compare your chapter one to somebody's chapter 10, chapter 15, because what we have to go through as beginners is exactly the same as every single one of you on this call. You know, we're no different. And I think that's what people, you know, really need to understand, you know, the, the tragic and the trauma and the, the discipline and the sacrifice. Family, I left my whole family behind to go solo and find a new life and, and, and really take it seriously to be able to become successful. And I think when you start putting things on a line and if this is something you truly want, you know, it, it, there's a lot of sacrifice that has to go into this. If you're just studying for one hour a day and hoping to become successful, they say it takes around an average of 10,000 hours um, to, to hit three success. Three years or something. If, if you only do three hours a day, that's seven years it's going to take you to complete 10,000 hours, seven years. So just imagine how many hours you need to put in one day to complete them 10,000 hours. Obviously, you can compound it by being productive, 
But, you know, it just comes down to how much work you're willing to put in to get to a certain amount. I sacrificed five years of my life. Um, and, you know, I look back now and I'm so glad I did. But, you know, what are you willing to put on the line without distracting yourself, you know, from your own goals because of everybody else is doing well and you're not? You just have to limit that, you know? Mm. I just want to add one thing for, I know Mike wants to say something, but just on that, Stop entertaining things and situations that contradict what you want, guys. Stop that. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> Stop. Okay, if you take any two things from me, it's if you're green, you're growing. If you're ripe, you're rotten. And stop entertaining things and situations that contradict what you want. Period. Mikey, what do you got? Yeah, it is something that um, I, I I mean, I was having this conversation even earlier, but it's not like it was just because it was only earlier. I've had this conversation for years. Social media, guys, is toxic. It is 100 percent, without a doubt. And when when you compare to ads or anybody that says that they have this or they have that or even in telegram or discord or this and somebody has this and you don't what it creates is an imbalance and it creates this idea of why am i not there regardless of the pain like what leon was saying the pain and the the blown accounts before that, because of course, nobody talks about that on social media, of course, but even be because all of, well, let me not just skip over that. That is super important of all of the pain and the trauma and the things, everything that Leon was saying was 100% on point of the things that it took for XYZ person to get on chapter 10 when you're on chapter one. But if if you really genuinely feel like social media uh and i use social media as a term as like i don't know ads or whatever that develops this perception for you why am i not there maybe it was a person that you show trading to and they excel and and figure out trading quicker than you do what that is, is an attack on the ego. There's no way about it. It is. You will feel like, well, I must be failing because the person I showed, you know, this to is already finding the quicker success uh, than I did. But do you know what that person has been through in their lives? Do you know what that person has had to overcome? Do you know anything about what that person has, again, had to endure in order to get to this point? Probably not. Maybe so, but probably not. Social media or the idea of comparison, like me, um, as a Chairman 100 and as an educator, do you guys know why I don't? share trades and talk about money and talk about all of these things. It's not just for you guys. It's just in general. It's something that I've learned uh, throughout my process of being, I guess, specifically a part of this niche or network marketing or whatever. People think that just because I have, you know, gotten to whatever point, Therefore, if they follow me and whatever it is that I say or, you know, talk about, therefore, they will get to those results. That is toxic. That's not how shit works, guys. I can't even begin to explain to you what I've had to go through in order to get to where I am. I'm the first educator on what you guys know as go live.
it was known as IML TV. I'm the, I have been in this platform since the very beginning. I'm not saying that as an ego thing at all. Please understand that I'm not trying to say, look at me, look at me. Please understand that's not why I'm saying what I'm saying. Please. I'm saying that, do you know what it took to even get to that? You know how many people ask me, Mike, how do you get on Go Live? My answer to that question is always the same. It is not, how do I get on Go Live? It is, how does Go Live continue without you? What value do you provide? What do you give in order that the platform needs you? Not that you are trying to force yourself onto a platform, not just go live, just anything. What do you have that other people don't? What is it that you can provide? Guys, I was teaching for years on Twitch. If you don't know what Twitch is, it's a video game streaming YouTube. website. I remember and Michael on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, and then it was YouTube because Twitch banned us. And then it was YouTube. And then YouTube was taking down our videos left and right because of copyrighted music and all this other stuff. And then we created what was known as IML TV or what most of you guys know is Go Live. But I'm not, uh, please understand, guys, I'm not saying that for any other reason other than the fact that it was never my goal. That was never something I was trying to do. It happened as a result. It happened as a consequence of all of my other decisions. And I don't mean consequence like as a bad thing. It happened, again, as a result of everything else that I was doing. And so when you guys are really trying to understand, you know, what it is that we have here, you have to understand that like something like social media, I deal with this. I, I swear to you guys, you don't, you have no idea. I deal with this if not every day, but if not every other day of why is this person uh, doing better in trading. Uh, and this is my results. Even though I can easily identify exactly why with not too long of a conversation of what fundamentally is not happening, that's not what they're on the call for. You know what they're on the call for? Why is that person better than me? They're not there because they want to figure out necessary not i'm not speaking to anyone or uh not anyone but i'm not speaking about anyone specifically at all it is just something that for years i've had to uh you know talk about with people and social media for example or telegram or i don't know whatsapp or discord or whatever it doesn't matter people naturally start to compare themselves and put themselves lower. Do you know what happens when that happens? It would be the same thing if I, for example, put myself on a pedestal. If I were to consistently talk about how much money I make, how many pips I catch, how many trades I win or don't win, Honestly, have you guys ever considered what you would think about your trading if I just nonstop talked about my trading? You would start, maybe not anybody here. Uh, again, I'm not speaking to anyone specifically. I hope everybody here understands that. But you would start to compare yourself to me. Creating an imbalance, creating a problem, or Leon or SJ, or Zach, or anybody. And that creates this problem that I must, you know, be here. Forget the reason why they're at that higher point or the years that they put in or the blood, sweat, and tears or the blown accounts or the anxiety or the depression or the doubt. 
Nobody cares about that. All they care about is, again, why am I not there? Because they don't see any of that. You, you know, do uh, like aside from SJ and Leon, do any of you guys know what I went through in 2017, in 2018? You have no idea. None. You have no idea what the hell I went through. And it would be the same thing for them because they've been around just as long as me, of course. But if you don't know what I went through and then to not again, anybody specifically, because it's not just with anybody on this call. It's with people that aren't on my team that are just, you know, tuning to go live or people that message me on Instagram or people that aren't even in the company, whatever. And then they think, Mike, I've been, I've been trading and I've been doing this just as long as you, why are you so much more successful than me? How can I even begin to answer that question? How can I even begin to honestly, because I don't try to give a cliched, oh, it's your mindset. What the fuck does that even mean? Yeah. Nobody knows what the hell mindset is. And this is why I love SJ so much, because I detest the idea, this idea of person. Everybody does need personal development, but this like so many people are convinced, well, if I listen to X, Y, Z thing or read X, Y, Z thing, therefore I should be a millionaire. That is apps. Uh, like it is so, oh my God. And then it, even worse than that, people think like, how, it, it, I don't know if it's any of you guys in here. Do you guys like spend 12 hours on a chart? Do you just back test all day? Do you just study all day and then you don't have the results that you want, but then you will sit there and confirm to yourself, but I'm backtesting all day, but I'm, you know, I'm going through all of these things all day, but I still don't have the results that I want. Why? And then they can convince themselves, oh, it's the mentor or the strategy or the platform or me or SJ or this or that or their dog. And then it's just like, okay, well, that's the reason why. So therefore, trading doesn't work. I, as funny as that might sound, the irony is, is that it's true. I deal with this on a daily basis from people from Africa to South America to Canada to Great Britain to Sylvania to Australia to like anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how old they are, boy, girl, black, white, none of that matters. We are constantly alluding away from the idea that it is us. We are the problem. And social media and that kind of thing only perpetuates that problem. When people get on the Instagram, they're like, okay, all right, I'm going to go to Instagram real quick and I'm going to look at some stories and blah, 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 look at the private stories or whatever. Oh, look, that guy made, you know, that guy or girl made X amount of money uh, on the same pair that I trade. Why the hell did I not trade? You know, and then it just ends up in this in completely, you know, far off thing when it has nothing to do with any of that at all. So I'm sorry that this was like, I don't even know how long I have, I've been talking. I talk way too damn much, but it was just what Leon was saying about social media in particular. That is something that I can absolutely say, even from 2016, 2017, 2018, and even Leon and SJ can probably even attest to this. The way that it is now, how many gurus do you guys hear about? How many ads do you get on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or whatever that everybody's just a genius now? It is nonstop. And the problem with that, again, is that it just, it, feel, it, it fuels this idea that we are less and they are more. Mm -hmm. Therefore, 
we must, you know, subscribe to whatever it is that they're doing, however it is that they're doing. Therefore, we will get their success. Please understand, and this is the last thing that I'm going to say, and I'll hand it back to SJ because, damn, do I talk a lot. Your trading results, good or bad, do, does not mean shit to anybody. You could be the best trader in the world and show your brother, your cousin, a friend, your mom, whoever, about trading. Just because you are successful or not successful, do you honestly think that means anything at all to the next person? Not at all. You could be the worst trader in the world, and then somebody that you expose to the, you know, to the profession of trading, to the philosophy of trading, they could be better than you when it comes to trading or not better per se, but they figure it out quicker than you do. Your results don't matter as much as everybody likes to think that it is. It's simply not. And that's always something that I try to dispel as well. Do you know what trading results mean for people? Belief. Well, I have results, so therefore, I believe that this works. If anybody, honestly, and you don't have to answer this in the chat or anything, but if you, you as an individual right now, if you were listening to me, and if you are still struggling with the idea, does trading work? Is this real? Does this really work? That is, uh, that is absolutely not up for debate. Trading works. It is not like, it, it, it's not a question. It's not up for conversation. It does. More importantly, do we work? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, SJ. I'm, yeah, I talk way too much, guys. I'm sorry. Stop apologizing. I think we should do a hashtag for Mike's apologizing because we would get probably equal amounts donations. <laughs> Incredible insights. I um, it reminds me, you know, last week, you know, in terms of like the personal development world and why just saying, you know, work on your mindset and work on your psychology and mindset is everything. The fuck does that mean? Literally, what does it mean? Right, the amount of calls that I've done one on one with people that aren't even in my team for no money diving deep into, into shit, right? They think, you know, not, they just think, you know, not following their trading plan and discipline is a problem. No, no, no. Where else, where, where else are you undisciplined in your life? What causes that? What causes that? There's so many layers to this stuff. They're the conversations that I love having, right? So if that is you and you are having a bit of a, you know, a rough time on the charts, bring it to me message me let's get on a zoom mike is also down for that right but it, it brings me to you know mike was pouring his heart out to me i don't know last tuesday or wednesday and i was pouring my heart we're both having the shittest day <laughs> and then like halfway through the conversation he's like what happened i'm like i'm really fucked off with napoleon hill <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah i don't even know who napoleon hill is anyway i'm still investigating but i was really fucking annoyed with him this is like dead philosopher or wherever the fuck he is i don't know but i'm real dirty on him right now still investigating i will spill the beans when i know it could also be horseshit but what where i was going with that is just the sometimes the personal development world the self-help world it's it's a money-making industry it's incredibly fucking toxic Right. So when you are, you know, when we say, you know, work on your mindset, there's a reason for that, but it's not necessarily reading a book is going to help you. It's you working on your shit. It's you figuring out why you are the way you are. Why do you continuously do things? Why do you keep breaking promises with yourself? Why do you lack so much trust with yourself? Like there's just so much shit that goes into it. And the, you're like, the market is just a mirror to that. So whatever you're going through in the charts, try and find some correlations throughout every other day, every other, you know, your everyday life. There's a pattern somewhere. There's a pattern. Oh my God, who said that? 
<laughs> the fact that he never knew, don't, we're not getting into it. I'm going to hand it to Leon. <laughs> iPhone, who is that? Who I, love, I, love, I love this topic as well. I love it so much. Like I've read a lot. I have listened to a lot of audios, but nothing compares to what I've done in the field. You know, 20 hours, you know, 20 hours of reading is a comparison of two hours in the field. So by you taking action on your life every day and being in the field rather than just reading and hoping you're going to get rich or listen to audios, hoping that magically one day you're going to become successful is, is a taboo. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to really understand your actions speak louder than your words and words are things that are just going into your subconscious. And if you're not actually taking action on your subconscious, on the things that you're getting programmed with, all the knowledge that you're learning is just going to the graveyard with you. It's not actually getting put to use. So for me, I, I always tell people I'm more of an action man. You know, I'd rather just be in the field learning rather than just studying and thinking, oh, you know, hopefully this, this I'll use this one day. You know, why don't I use it right now and learn it if it works? So, you know, for me, that's why I love just taking action on the things that I'm learning rather than just listening to it. You know, you're going to learn more from your own actions rather than somebody else's experience because somebody else's experience is going to be completely different to yours. You know, we're all different human beings. Even you that know? on the charts. Like Even you, could literally, you could look for a buy. I could look for a sell. You know what I mean? Like exactly. same chart, same whatever, but how we perceive it is completely different. And like you were saying as well, Eshe, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the life, a lot of our life is reflected on the charts and it's so true, you know, how disciplined you are doing the little things every day is going to reflect on how you do the big things, you know, making your bed in the morning, brushing your teeth, vacuuming your own room, doing cooking one day, like anything that you do reflects to your whole day. You know, if you're just sat around hoping that you're going to become rich, you got to ask yourself your habits are what are gonna make you rich. Not what you read, but what you do. So when you start changing your habits and your routines, that's when success really starts to, you know, interrupt within your life is because you're, you know, you're, you're confusing the brain. Well, you normally do this at this certain day. Why are you doing this now? You know, if you keep doing the same things every day, your brain is programmed a certain way and you gotta confuse that. It's like a muscle. If you go to the gym for five years and work on the same muscle, doing the same technique in the same routine, your muscle becomes programmed and it knows exactly what you're going to do when you go into the gym and it stays the same size. So if you don't switch up that routine and that strategy, when you go into the gym, that muscle is never going to grow the brain, your results, your success, exactly the same. Mm. I love it. I love it. And just to, to wrap this up and I'll let Mike close the call out. Um, I want you guys to homework this week. Think about if patience is one of, if patience and discipline are two, just two, there's plenty more, you know, traits and attributes of successful traders. I want you to, when you go about your day, start being a little bit more intentional, start seeing where other ways in life where you're impatient. Is it when there's traffic? Is there when you're walking behind someone who's really fucking slow? <laughs> and you're like, oh, for fuck's sake, can you just like, you know, overtake them? Like, <laughs> we all do it, don't lie. Um, yeah, guilty. Like, think about those areas because that is also going to show up on the charts. If you're impatient, maybe you're going to pull the trigger and get in too early. Right? It shows up everywhere. If you're not disciplined, if you don't brush your teeth, which I hope you all do, <laughs> if you don't do your dishes at night and you go to bed with a filthy kitchen, we can't be friends. <laughs> right think about areas in your life where you're also not disciplined pet hate for slow drivers but sydney life for sure was it you mike who said something about um when you're driving and if you i don't know it was you i think it was you and you get to work on time or maybe late i don't even know what i'm talking about <laughs> i'm hoping it was you so you know what i'm talking about no, it was probably me. I was just saying that people that are late to work, they speed and they hit every red light. Yeah, yeah. yeah versus yeah. the people that are on time that just cruise through everything because yeah. the you know the lights are set up to where people aren't speeding and hitting every mm. single you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was you. That literally, thank, thank, thank you for that summarize. <laughs> Mike, Leon, thank you so much for tonight. I'm gonna chuck it to Mike to close it, but Leon, it's been amazing i don't know why we haven't done this again sooner so it's going to happen again 
But Mikey, I'll let you close the call out. Well, you know, guys, again, these calls are designed or at least not designed, um, more per, at least for me per, uh, personally, is uh, to bring what frustrations or what problems are actually in trading. If you guys have heard this information before, and again, the same problems consistently keep happening, uh, but again, nothing is changing, then if we don't know what it is, then we can't help. And I'm not saying that this is directly towards anybody, but a lot of people, and I just, I just know for me personally, because I personally am one of the, uh, I'm a, the type of individual that as well, that avoids confrontation. Uh, these calls, not just this one, but anything that, you know, I do or SJ does, or, you know, anybody, it's not just about being cliched. It's not just about saying things that you think that you need to hear, but I need to hear we, we as a community, not I'm not trying to put me as a mentor and you as a student, even though that, of course, might be the case. We're human beings. What the hell are you struggling on? What is what is the problem? What are you suffering? Like, what do you feel is, you know, the issue? If you feel like uh, you're bothering me or inconveniencing me or SJ or whatever, or feeling like you, you you're going to look at at you're going to be looked at in a different way on a call like this by being like, uh, you know, uh, Mike SJ, I feel like you're lying. For example, like something completely, uh, you know, uh, out of the left fields, uh, so to speak. I encourage those conversations. I encourage the challenge. I encourage the problems because that's the only way anything is ever going to be solved. I can say the same things 50 times, 100, 1,000 times, Leon, SJ, all of us. But if, again, we don't know how to help, we simply do not know how to help. So if you want to message us personally, on the call, whatever, I can feel, you know, maybe that somebody feels like they don't want to speak up because, you know, however other many people are watching or whatever, and they don't want to be that type of person. That's completely fine. I don't have a problem with that at all. If you were to be that type of person to speak up and say, this is what I'm struggling with. This is what I don't understand. I don't understand how this works. I don't understand this, th you know, whatever. I don't care what it is. If I or anybody else can offer any kind of wisdom, that's what these are for. This is not just to, well, I was on the calls. So why am I not a millionaire? That's what these aren't for. These, not just this call, but, you know, any call I do with, uh, you know, doing one-on-ones or anybody else uh, with SJ or other team calls with Jenna or whoever, bring the shit, bring the problems, bring the negativity. Bring the shit that you think that we think that we that you think maybe that we don't want to hear. Because that's the only way that shit's ever going to get solved. If you're just going to sit there and deal with it. And I'm not saying that anybody in here is doing that. But if you are next week, bring you. Not the you that you think I want to hear or SJ or Leon or anybody else. Bring the real you. Bring this shit because that's what this shit is for guys thank you all so much for real i appreciate your time seriously thank you mike love you brother love you too leon brother thank you so much dog for real thanks guys thank you everyone mike you stay on <laughs> i got you <laughs> leon thank you so much awesome to have you all send me some takeaways right in the discord what your biggest takeaways were tonight and what you plan on implementing for this coming week and there they're on um and let's do it guys bring your shit next week <laughs> thank you sj we love you we love you bye bye